wrath will be poured out on some of you throughout an eternity in hell because of the crimes you have committed and will continue to commit throughout all eternity. The raging of your heart against the sovereignty of a good God. But on that tree, the wrath of God, the justice of God, was poured out upon the head of His only begotten Son. As I have already quoted, it pleased the Lord to crush Him. You know, when Jesus is in the garden and three times He prays, let this cup pass from Me. I have heard preachers say, well, the cup was the cross, the cup was the nails, the cup was the Roman whip. Absolutely preposterous. Because if that were the case, then, then tell me, how is it that the captain of our salvation is not as brave as his own followers? Is it not true that after the ascension of Christ, countless thousands of Christians have died on crosses? crucified, not only crucified, crucified upside down, covered in tar and set on fire to light the streets of Rome. And yet many of them went to those crosses singing hymns full of joy. So you're going to tell me that the disciples of Jesus go to the cross singing hymns full of joy, but the captain of their salvation, the Messiah himself, cowers in a garden and doesn't want to go? Do you honestly think that the Lord of glory feared a whip? What was in the cup? Throughout the Bible, it tells us what's in the cup. If I were to sum up all the prophets and put them all together, I could say something like this. God speaking, because of the iniquity and the rebellion of the nations, I will hand them the cup of my wrath and I will force them to drink it and they will drink it and they will stagger and they will die. Someone had to drink the cup of God's wrath to satisfy His justice. On that tree, Christ took the cup of wrath and drank it down. You've all heard the story of, of Abraham and Isaac he goes up on that mountain to offer his only son. And the old man draws back the knife, lays his hand on the brow of his boy and draws back the knife. And when the old man's will has given in to God's, he brings the knife down and God stops him. And you say, what a beautiful ending to the story. It's not the ending. It's the intermission. Years and years and years roll past. And then God's only Son is hanging on a tree. And God lays His hand on the brow of His only begotten Son and brings the knife down and slaughters Him. Are you beginning to see what the cross is really about? Now, if I was up here with some new revelation, you should all walk out the door. This is not new revelation. This is just historical Christianity that no one preaches anymore. Because we've reduced this gospel down to four things, four spiritual laws, or five things God wants you to know. And that's why it has no power. Look at what God has done. He has taken it upon Himself to do our sin away. His only Son submitted in love and joy to that will. He became a man. He lived a perfect life. He went to that tree. A price had to be paid. A death under the wrath of God to satisfy His justice. And Jesus Christ stood in our law place and was crushed under the will of His Father. It's as though He drank down that cup and when he cried out, it is finished, he turned it over and not one drop of wrath came out. It was finished. He paid it all. He paid it all. And this same Jesus who died did not remain dead. He vindicated his father on that tree. You say, how, Brother Paul? He proved once and for all that God is just even though he justifies wicked men. 
Here's the accusation against God throughout all of human history. Can you imagine the devil? What did the devil do? He sinned and what happened? Perfect justice was laid out before him and there was no need for an explanation. God is just. He sinned. Justice has been done. But then there's Adam. Sins. Can you imagine the accuser of God? Oh God, what is this? I sin and justice. This one, this ball of dirt, rails against you. You give him a promise? What's happened to your justice? Oh, and Abraham, he's your friend now. Where's your holiness, God? Oh, in Israel, your people, how many times have they committed idolatry against you? How many times should they have died? And David, a man after your own heart? What's happened to the justice of God? Two thousand years ago, God gave His answer. Do you want to know how I can spare man from the beginning, even with their father, Adam? Do you want to know how I can call Abraham my friend? Do you want to know how I can call David a son? Because there is my son now, dying for them all. So now God is just. Why? He has punished our sin. But He has punished our sin in His only begotten Son. He alone is uniquely qualified to carry it away because the blood of bulls and goats will not take away sin. So a body was prepared and the Son of God was born, the man Christ Jesus. Adam had sinned. The son of Adam must die. He became a son of Adam and died in the place of his people. He had to be man, but he also had to be God. That's why the doctrine of the Jehovah Witnesses is so vile. Because they claim that Christ was nothing more than a mere creature that God sent down to do a work of salvation. No, God came down to do a work of salvation. He had to be God. Why did He have to be God? If He's not God, He's not Savior. And if He is a Savior, He must be God. Because as Jonah says, salvation belongs to the Lord. It comes from the Lord and no one else. Why did He have to be God? Who but God can withstand the wrath of God and rise again? Why did He have to be God? He had to give His life away. I hear all these people saying, well, you know, if God couldn't find a perfect angel, God couldn't find a perfect man. It wouldn't have mattered if he'd have found a perfect angel or a perfect man. It still wouldn't have worked. God came down. God became a man. God. For you. And gave his life away. Let me ask you a small question. The life that you have, can you give it away? It's not even yours to start off with. It's not inherent in you. It's something derived. Your life comes from God. Me giving my life away is like me giving your car away. It's not mine to start off with. But Christ said, I have authority to lay down my life and I have authority to take it back up again. It's His own. 